Hey guys, OG Albine here, bringing you guys our IBA Season 6 Week 10 Battle against Diet Titan's new Britain Rock Off. Jason is a really good friend of mine, um, he's a very solid player, we've played him a ton as of recently, uh, we had a game go up against him on Wednesday, where it was actually, he was in call with us, as well as John and Kurt, and it was a very interesting video, so I'm not going to spoil that one, if you haven't checked it out, go check it out, even if you're not a big little cook guy, um, it's, it's a very interesting, it's not a typical, like, analytical this is what we need to do to win type of video it's just a bunch of idiots yelling at each other for 20 minutes so uh, if that sounds a little bit more interesting or a nice change of pace to what we usually got definitely go check that out it was a lot of fun um but regardless we're going up against jay jay is known to get very lucky versus us he's a great player um but ever since so we hacked him like the first game we played back in gen 7 like about a year ago he played for the first time in academy season 2 and i got incredibly lucky like i hacked the living hell out of him in an awful match but i should never won uh, but we took it at the time. We were I was super happy about it because I really needed that win. Jason's a very good player, like I said. So we were able to grab one from them. But ever since then, our games have like oh, we've been serially haxy in his favor. So we'll play like two games, and two of them will be haxy, and then we'll play again. It's clean. Two of them will be haxy, then they'll be clean. He hacks us twice in one season in NCP showdown this last season. Um, he beat me in GDL. Um, I should have beat him in BBR, but he hacks me there. So like. I'm nervous when I play Jason. He, he hacks me a little bit in that video on Wednesday. So I'm a little nervous to go up against him. But in all reality, this game doesn't matter at all. Um, going into this, um, we're clinched for playoffs. Jason is too. We got a forfeit last week because my opponent just dropped off the face of the earth. So we built in five minutes and we're like, hey, you want to play? And we played on showdown. So uh, I didn't want to give up too much for a potential playoff rematch. And the game didn't matter too much in the grand scheme of things besides seeding. And I didn't really care what I played around with, to be completely honest in this uh, more chill league. So, uh, yeah, we built this really quick, but I am going to go with the team because we do have reasons to, uh, you know, what we brought and so you have that background knowledge going into the match. But before I jump in, totally forgot to mention that only a good 40 to 50% of you guys that are watching the videos each and every time they come out are actually subscribed to the channel. So go ahead, hit that sub button for me. It really helps me out. It's super easy, completely free, and it lets me know you're enjoying what I'm doing. So I would really appreciate it. We're pushing towards 400 by the end of the year. Uh, that's definitely my main goal. Uh, we have a bit of a ways to go but i think we can definitely do it and i would appreciate your support along the way but with that being said let's go ahead and jump in um our team quick little matchup rundown consists of salazzle a little persian superior mega dancy frogadier Golbat, oregon z komo seismitoad celestila and reuniclus while our opponent's team consists of raiku victini mamoswine togekiss scissor uh mega scissor honchko decidui vaporeon drodagon dragology and girder uh, Jason has some really big threats on his team. Big Teamy, I don't have switches to, especially if he's a smart and he goes with like a mixed set, like mix V create energy ball kind of just runs me. Um, don't really have much for that, unfortunately. Uh, but I don't think Scarf is very good, so I do have mess of revenge again. Well, um, Raikou, also very scary versus me with Hidden Power Grass. It hits my team very, very hard. Mammoth Swine is Mammoth Swine, and I do not have Mammoth Swine checked. My, uh, my ground immunity is neutral to ice so that's not good um even with a cell steel we get just demolished by that thing so we're gonna have to be careful around that um and then he has some really annoying things to break like his uh his vaporing can be potentially really obnoxious for us his mega scissor can be really obnoxious for us and his token is but going to the team that we brought i guess we kind of already showed off a little bit of it on that too uh again very simple ev spreads are not going to be as intricate as we usually are here for iba but we have a sub nasty called dual steps Salazzle, I think it does really well this game. Uh, we can force a switch on a lot of things, such as like a Tokus or a Mega Scizor or a bunch of things like that, and get it to plus two. Sludge Wave is going to chunk a Vaporeon at plus two if we can position it before that thing comes in. Then we can do it with a plus two Sludge Wave, and the rest of this team just doesn't appreciate that stat combo very well at all. Mega Dancy, um, sub three attacks, pretty, pretty simple spread there. We are just basically trying to outspeed Victini. We're going to force a switch. And we're going to get up a sub before that Mega Scizor comes in so we can HP fire it the turn after and just clean knock it out, which is obviously super clutch. And it just puts on an immense amount of offensive pressure on his team, especially with Hazards. They pour in a little bit chipped if it's for death. Uh, we should be able to just cleave through his team um, pretty easily with Mega Dancy. Then we got a Dual Dance uh, Silk Scarf Queasy with Adaptability. Try Attack Nasty Ball, Shadow Ball, and Agility. Uh, this is going to be our main win con. Depending on what's left on his team, I can choose which dance to go for. I don't necessarily think I'll need both of them, but um, it's kind of in this instance where he has only slow, fast stuff left. I'm going to nasty pull it up and break through his team. He only has, you know, his Scarfers and Faster Bombs left. I'm going to Agility and break through his team. Now, 
Uh, something you'll see in the game, I'm accidentally shadow ball. Originally, I was agility three attacks with hidden power fire, but then I realized I can just go hidden power fire and still hit that Sejoy completely fine. Uh, so I meant to take off hidden power fire for nasty plot. I mean, uh, shadow ball for nasty plot. Keep hitting hit HP fire, uh, but we're accidentally shadow ball. So that being said, uh, with that, if the mega sword does come, we need to chip that thing down to range of a plus two shadow ball opposed to a plus two HP fire, which is like pretty much a guaranteed ogre with APZ. So that's unfortunate, but not the biggest deal in the world. Then we have a defensive cell steel. This is going to be our main uh, mammal swine check. It's a good natural nu general nuisance to his team. It also checks the scissor. We're kind of walled by Victini, but um, I couldn't really fit the moose slots for like an EQ, and we're not seeing it on it anyway, so I'd rather just, you know, get the seeds off, maybe, you know, chip it down with that. Cook for tech in its face, and while we're chipping it down with that, plus rocks and stuff like that, we can also see potentially choice and locks no move, stuff like that. We're no buried toad, and things pretty uh, self explanatory. This set would come in a Magil versus Victini, and we don't take it on very well. We have Scalds, Toxic, Stealth Rock, and Earth Power. Uh, pretty mixed defensive spread because we can also check a Raikou pretty well um, if it is not HP Grass. And obviously with our Rindo, we will take it off with the HP Grass. I wanted to go Earthquake for mix, but I also didn't probably want to miss out on um, the speed for like, uh, you know, a really aggressive Vaporeon or Dragon. I want to be able to outspeed and talk to that thing if possible. And then we have a sub HP Fire Synth, um, the Storm Superior. If we can chip the Tokukiss, this mod in particular goes crazy versus his team. He does not have responses for this Pokemon once. The Tokugis is chipped and willed and gone, and I think pretty much every other member on our team can, uh, you know, accomplish that in this matchup, so that's obviously really nice. Uh, but yeah, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump on item of the match. Alright guys, here we are with the battle. So you can see the six adjacent elect Frankie with the Raikou, Tokugis, Girder, Victini, um, Decidui, and Mamoswine. So pretty much what we expected, minus no Mega Scissor, which is um, honestly understandable. I do have a Soul Steel, I have a Solazzle. I have a lot of things to really check and take on a Scissor. Um, and I have a Seismic Soul, which actually takes on pretty well as well. Uh, but I figured it might want to come for the Mega Deancy because he is very, very Deancy weak with the team he ended up bringing, especially because he didn't bring Vaporeon either. And that one definitely surprised me. I know it's fodder for Serp. Other than that, it kind of just walled my entire team. So let's me play a little bit more, um, you know wild with Serp, if that makes any sense, uh, in this, this specific matchup, uh, to where I can, you know, kind of use it more offensively, opposed to where I needed to keep it around for the Vaporeon before. So, uh, right off rip, I am going to just go ahead and lead off with my size for Toad. The reason I want to lead off with Toad is because, uh, Victini lead is very likely in the sense that he can kind of just click a button versus my team, or you turn out if he wants to grab some momentum, and I figured this is the best lead to potentially take it on. Now, turn one, I really did want to get on my rocks. Rocks been phenomenal this game. However, I was thinking in my head, like, ah, if he's energy willing, this is freaking to be Rindo, something like that. Um, I could be in a really bad spot, or if he's like Z or something like that, uh, you know, obviously not a great position for me, and I want to scald for free, try and get some chip damage off on something on his team, because he doesn't really switch into it very well. Um, he can go to Sijuai, but he risks a burn, and if he's physical, that's obviously not great for him. As he is just going to U-turn out, not really revealing if he's choice or not, but uh, he is going to go and lose to Sijuai, and I think he just punched his keyboard when he made nicknames for this, because I was like, oh no, I need to do nicknames, and he goes, yeah, me too. Um, but we're well, unfortunately not going to get a Scald, I'm going to be forced out to go into my Salazzle, um, reason being it's really the only member on my team that can, uh, you know, switch into this thing uh well uh at all <laughs> in all honesty and obviously if he was going to click an attacking move it's probably going to be leaf blade i could have gone selly but selly doesn't really want to take the hits because i want to keep it healthy in order to check that mammal swine since it's the only thing on my team that's buffering that thing from just six owing me honestly uh so he is going to go for a sword dance on my switch definitely a fair play unfortunately i'm not going to knock him out with this flamethrower but i get very very much so need a chip and we're gonna die with spirit shock right here but we get a lot of chip off so lazo wasn't 100 needed um and we should be able to still function and, you know, be the team without us. Probably our least useful member at this point in the game. So, he's going to go a little left. He's back. And I'm going to go PZ. The reason I go PZ opposed to something else to prevent it is because if he has Sneak, um, he can get a lot of chip on something as, like, a last-ditch effort. Opposed to, with my Porygon, he can't do that. I outspeed him, and I guarantee knock off the Shadow Ball. So, I put on more offensive pressure, and I lose less from it. And, again, he doesn't switch into PZ very well all with the team that he brought. So, we're going to go ahead and click Shadow Ball. He's pivots out into Girder. Um, takes just about nothing from that, 31, so we're going to be forced to pivot out, because obviously Drain Punch is pretty free in that instance. Go into our Celesteela, as little as I want to take Chip on this thing, I'm kind of forced to, because of the fact that, um, you know, I don't really have much else that can really pivot in on this thing, as I am going to fall for the lead seed as it reveals the bulk up, and this is pretty scary. We should be able to beat this thing 1v1, um, but it's going to be very tough. As I'm going to protect right here, I don't think he's going to bulk up twice on my face in case I am air slash. He doesn't see my moveset at all. Uh, this turn, though, I am going to reveal the Heavy Slam, do about 21%. 
uh, as he's going to get a clean 36 off of that Drain Punch. But uh, with our lefties and our, um, what do you call it, our Leech Seed, we're getting a lot of that back. As we get off another Heavy Slam, um, as he's going to get another 34 on us. But once again, we're, we're only losing like a net of like, you know, 20-ish damage. Right here, I'm going to click Protect. Didn't expect him to bulk up, and what even if he did, um, Protect should put him in range of a Heavy Slam after the next Drain Punch that he clicked, and it would keep me as healthy as humanly possible. He's going to make a nice aggressive switch into his Teeny. I'm going to click Protect in case it is Choice, and he's going to pivot out himself, showing me that he's most likely Choice in some way, uh, shape, or form. And because he knows that I have Protect, and if he locks no move, um, I can kind of, you know, scout him from there. So that gives me pretty good information as he makes the play into his Raikou. Uh, and this is pretty unfortunate because I don't have great switch ins as I am going to go Toad. Kind of forced to at this point. I could have gone Raikou, I mean, uh, Superior in theory, and just started to click Leech Storm potentially, but if he's like HP Ice instead, that's obviously not great for us. Uh, I am going to go Toad though. Click a clean Earth Power as he is going to hit the uh, HP Ice, uh, HP Grass on me, giving me good information, showing me that my Serp probably walls this thing, and then he's going to pick me off with the next one. It's like you do get the Spread Drop, which is nice, but um, looking back on this in hindsight, I think that I should have. Um, Pivoted Serp right here because I could have kept this for later and uh, potentially try to get up rocks on the girder um, if it ever ended up coming back in because rocks would have been phenomenal as game with the Tokus and the Victini and you know potentially like a Sash Mammo, a bunch of different things honestly. Uh, just punishing the Victini is the main thing though, and obviously this is Gen 7, so no heavy duty boots or anything like that to worry about either. So, fortunately, we're gonna make a bit of a meh play and let our size and go down, but again, we we're playing this in call, this game didn't really matter. Uh, we were just kind of getting it over with since the Sunday the game was due. And right here, I'm going to go out into Serp. Um, it puts on the most offensive pressure, and it doesn't, you know, really take much from this thing at all, because, like, the worst you can do with, what, like, a Shadow Ball, uh, which is honestly going to pounce off Serp. We uh, should be able to hit this thing very hard. So, we are going to go just for a Leech Storm. He makes a smart pivot out into Tokus. That's completely fine, though. I couldn't really mess around with this thing otherwise, unfortunately, as I am going to pivot the Ancy. He doesn't click Air, uh, Thunder Wave, which is very nice, 3 Mega. And what this is going to allow me to do is go up a free sub, uh, unfortunately, I'm not Earth Power, so I won't be able to knock out this Raikou, depending on the spread, uh, unless I get a crit or something like that. But there's guaranteed force switch, and if he wants to try and like stay in and uh, I don't know, maybe Scarf he tries to fish for a flinch or something like that. If I get behind a sub uh, against that Tokus, I'm looking really, really nice. So he is going to be forced out as he do get up said sub, which is really, really nice. Um, this Raikou is going to be forced to take a giant hit as it T bolts me, and I moon blast it down all the way to six percent. Unfortunately, not picking up the KO. Uh, we get the special attack drop, which is actually going to kind of force his hand. And kind of force him into a Z-move position. I think Thunderbolt would have knocked me out from neutral um, special attack from the range I was at with my DNC. Uh, but obviously with the special attack drop, it probably didn't. But regardless, let's make my safe play into my superior. I didn't really have a reason not to. Um, and I'm just going to go for a Leaf Storm, uh, a substitute once again. Oops. Um, and then kind of synth up. Maybe I should have gone for a Leaf Storm. Maybe I should have synthed up on that turn and then pivoted it out. But it's completely fine. He shows me a move. It's going to be Air uh, Flamethrower. Uh, and he's going to go for an Air Slash right here. As I do just throw off a big moon blast. The reason I do, I mean, a, a power gem. The reason I do that is because his only switch in at this point uh, to a moon blast is Girder, uh, which obviously drops to a moon blast. And if he wants to sack off his Raikou, if I sub down, I'm going to put myself at what? 4% uh, HP, which, uh, you know, isn't great. I, I'm picked off by any priority. I'm picked off by a mock punch um, from an offensive, for, from any Girder, in all honesty. And if he's not super offensive, I can pick up one. From here, so I figured that just throwing off a hit was probably my best bet because it's most likely sack with Raikou, and I outspeed any non Scarf mod after that at this point. So, probably just clicking that move is great, and also keeps me out of range of potential Shadow Snake for the Decidueye. So, he's gonna go Mammoth Swine. I don't have a switch into this, my Tell Steel is very weakened. If he ends up clicking Ice Compassion, Scarf, he will to it KO me from here. So, what I'm gonna do is just click Moon Blast, try and get a little bit of you know information on this thing, see if it's faster than me or not. As I am just going to uh, click Moon Blast. If he clicks Ice Shard, we actually end up chewing that, which is really, really clutch. Because what this is going to let me do, get 70. And here, I'm going to make an aggressive play into my Seal Seal. Assuming he's going to Ice Shard again, he couldn't risk me going for another Moon Blast and just picking him off and him getting nothing out of that Pokemon. So this gives me a sack in the back for DMT. Or if I get in on a Victini after it clicks V Create, and I, you know, like, assuming it's Scarf, it could, you know, be banned and something else. Um, but it allows me to get in on a non-choice scarf Victini or a minus one uh, speed Victini because of the V-Create and just click a button and claim a KO. So I figured it'd be best to make the aggressive play into my Celesteela and just throw off a big heavy slam. Uh, no reason to mess around with this thing as he makes a smart play though and he gets up his rocks. The reason he gets up his rocks is so that I don't have um, a free DNC, uh, you know, kill after he comes in and clicks a button. As I am going to sack off my DNC here, no reason to keep it around. I don't have any removal or anything like that as he does try and click V-Create and I'm going to go into Serp. Now... 
at this point in the game, I'm like, shit, I kind of I kind of lose. <laughs> I got to lose to Victini right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Serp right here and I'm I'm just going to sack it off. This is 100% a sack as he's going to be able to ask me go for V create and kill me. He is scarf there confirmed, which is also very very good information. I was going to sub down if not try and get him very very weakened and throw off a big leaf storm and hopefully do some damage in that way. Uh, but he's going to ask me kill me and then it's going to make him a little bit slower. It's going to be a switch into my Porygon Z. Now, at this point, I saw my win count. It's him switching out because he doesn't want this to die because it kills my last two members. Uh, and going into, like, a Tokis to sack it off or a Decidueye to sack it off. So what I'm going to do is click Agility on his Pivot Out into the Decidueye, which is obviously really clutch. And from here, I'm just going to click Shadow Ball. I should be able to clean knock this thing out from 30, which is obviously really, really good. And from here, he's going to be forced out into his tokens. Now, at this range, he can't go into Girder because I'm 100% out of range of a Mach Punch. Um, and I'll lift that and just pick it off with try attack. He can't go into his Victini because I'm faster. Uh, and I don't think a Scarf V-Create actually kills me from here based on, uh, you know, my investment in him being, like, you know, like, Jolly or something like that. I think we might have been able to live a V-Create from this range. I don't remember for sure, but we might have been able to. Um, so this is going to force him into token kiss, And it kind of forces my hand right here because I'm looking and I'm like, I, I don't have anything to really break through this thing from neutral so what i'm going to do is i'm going to nasty plot and kind of just hope and pray that he doesn't have mock punch with girder or that he misses an air slash or something like that as i am going to nasty plot right here he does click air slash he hits he does about 54 so we should be in range of a mock punch from a girder unfortunately but um regardless we're going to just try and get the diff down a tiny tiny bit i'm going to click try attack and uh clean knock out that thing as he goes into the girder and at this point i'm like well if he has mock punch he has mock punch if not if he doesn't and i'm just going to click try attack turns out he doesn't have it, which is super clutch. We're going to be able to pick up a nice, clean sweep with our PZ. I believe it picked up um, one, two, three, four kills there at the end of the game. Showing it's worth, showing how scary this mod can be if you don't have, you know, sufficient means of revenging it and you do give it that setup opportunity. So PZ is going to be able to pick up a nice, clean sweep for us. We're going to end the season off seven and three. Round one, we play Zombie, which I'm actually playing tomorrow. I'm build for that. Um, but we're playing Zombie tomorrow. Uh, we played Zombie a couple weeks ago. He did end up beating us, but we did not being our best team because I knew he was someone that I would most likely end up playing in playoffs, and we end up playing him round one. So, you know, that and that ends up happening, which is obviously, you know, really clutch. Hopefully, we can ping, bring home a dub. I really like my team this season. I think it's definitely got championship potential, and we're going to do our damn best to do so. But, yeah, uh, with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like. And like I said, if you're new here, be sure to hit that sub button. It helps me out. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.